So I'm, I'm Mark Harper, I'm the Group Sustainable Development Manager at uh, John Swire and Sons Hong Kong. So my role, as I said, I sit at the holding company level, so our, our, our focus is very much on group strategy and group, group policy. So setting the strategy and policy framework, um, auditing its implementation and almost acting like in-house consultants to support uh, our operating company sustainability functions as and when they, they need it. So what you will see in the, the latest sustainability report is is very aggressive 2030 uh, targets around water waste uh, emission reductions along with long-term commitments around uh, uh, net zero emissions by 2050, zero waste to landfill by 2050, water neutrality by 2050. These are strong bold commitments that we're making so yeah i think certainly from a customer and from a providers of capital the expectations are significantly increasing i think um, regulation generally is a little bit slower to to the uh to the table um particularly from the government but from other regulators like the stock market for example you are starting to see a, a big shift in that and that will obviously be driven by uh their their stakeholders, which are obviously, is that obviously the investment community. So the Hong Kong Stock Exchange has significantly been ramping up its ambition and obviously that puts downward pressure on companies as well uh, to, to, to inc increase their, their ESG levels of ambition, their ESG levels of commitment. And I think as you start to see alignment with, with regulation, with some of the, the uh, ESG frameworks, particularly TCFD, then I think that's where uh, you're going to start to see a, a, a massive rapid increase in, in action from corporates. So I think TCFD is a fantastic framework really for um, helping companies to, to frame their response to, to climate change. You know, it looks at uh, four key pillars around corporate action. So um, do you have the right governance processes and, and structures in place in order to effectively and manage uh, your exposure to climate change risk and opportunities within within your your business. Um, do you is is climate risk built into your enterprise risk management framework, into your business strategy, into your financial planning? Um, what kind of targets, what kind of metrics are you using to track your impact on climate change, but also the reciprocal impact of climate change on your business? And TCFD is still relatively nascent you know you, um, but what's been exciting to see is the level of coalescence around TCFD from all the different reporting frameworks from all the different regulations so the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in its latest um, review of uh, the ESG guide you'll see a greater level of alignment with uh, TCFD framework um, you know asking companies to be disclosing how the board has oversight over um, climate change risk and opportunities. Um, how is it integrated into your enterprise risk management framework? What kind of climate risks are, are, are companies seeing? I think the, uh, so I think it's, it's a very exciting opportunity and it's something that, you know, we've, at, at Swire, we've been looking at TCFD now for the, certainly for the last three years and we've been slowly ramping up our level of, of disclosure around TCFD and the alignment of TCFD within our, our, our reporting method. I think what's quite exciting to me as a sustainability practitioner is that because of how TCFD is set up with that focus on governance, on, on uh, strategy, on risk management, it, it requires companies to align their broader business activities and business planning around climate risk. As a sustainability practitioner and someone who's come from the NGO space, where well, I guess I've always uh, had quite a utopian view, I think um, to me what's so exciting about TCFD is that it requires that alignment, and that true integration of sustainability into the, the business practices as opposed to it being a standalone activity. We set up a TCFD working group over a year ago now which has representatives not just from the sustainability function at centre and the equivalent within our operating companies, 
but we have representatives from our, our risk department, we have rep representatives from our uh, group finance, which is the accounting department, um, and we also have representatives from our corporate finance division who are essentially responsible for the, the investment strategies for the, for the group. So we've got that alignment of all of the necessary people or the necessary departments that are, are, are in place now to look at how we can better integrate uh, climate change considerations into how we, we uh, manage the business. Um, we've also um, um, uh, worked with a, a consultancy to do an evaluation of, of um, uh, the dozens of different um, climate risk tools that are available on the market um, and we, we've selected one of those tools and we're working with uh, the organisation um, that is the Climate Service uh, to essentially do a geospatial risk analysis of uh, at the moment around 800 of our most valuable assets. We've looked at a high physical risk scenario and a high transitional risk scenario um, and looked at how those impacts will change over time, change over those different scenarios so that we can then incorporate that into our business planning.